G'day, Anna. Oh, I like that background. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing that. I've got my, my youngest doing a bit of work here. He's curious. Oh. He's very quiet. Very worried. Also, you just don't have any time to think about anything. You know, no time. Then if, if there's things you need to be thinking about that, you know, are sort of negative, you, you don't have time to think about it. So it's good. You don't have time to worry or anything or... You know, That's very true. Boredom is dangerous. I'm worrying about, you know, Mark Twain, what did he say about worrying? You know, we worry about all these things never come true. So it's good because worrying, what do we even have that emotion for? Is it an emotion? Maybe it's I reckon. A, I, <laughs> I reckon it's the anxiety that we would have had about surviving. But because we're kind of not surviving, we're not in the wild, we just then worry about stuff that we think is going to make us... Those against dinosaurs, even though we didn't live with dinosaurs, but I'll just... <clears throat> For the sake of this cartoon chat that I'm having here with myself. Sorry, Anna. Oh, I so normality very soon. How are you going? It looks like you've got Christmas lights behind you. Or is I, don't that... like, I like them. This is like the them. darkest part of the whole house. I don't so... have lights everywhere. I would just say, let the world be Christmas. Because, you know, why just for a month, a year do we have Christmas lights? It should be all the time. No, that, and I'm too lazy to take the ones down that are outside, so they stay up all year as well. Oh, that's but, awesome. I like that. They make it cheery. <laughs> and so you're getting a bit of writing done? No, none. Can't oh, focus none. at all. No, oh, no, not none, a bit. I find it really hard to focus. Like I write really fast, so I'll like yeah. bang out like a really quick bit and then I'll spend the rest of the time kind of faffing. And just doing something that I don't really do. Oh, this is good to hear. I mean, I, I'm getting a lot done, but like I'm a, the world's greatest procrastinator. Well, no, actually, is procrastinating in the right word? Yeah, no, I think it is. I don't think it is. I reckon it's like percolating. It's like you do something else so that it all can. Yeah. Happen I'm in the back. Coloring in. It's different when you're writing, you're actually living the moment. You know, coloring in, you got a lot of time to dream and. Just, you know, you're sort of procrastinating but colouring in at the same time. I love colouring in. That's why I developed a style where you just get lost in a lot of detail where you got a lot of colouring in to do. It just gives me time to sort of just zone out. and I, I, I tell myself I'm actually doing something, but really I'm just daydreaming. It's colouring in. You know, it doesn't take any skill colouring. It's a powerful in. thing to daydream. It is powerful. I think. It's I think it's powerful. And we colour in every morning in our house. Oh, that's great. It's, we great do. Mindfulness. Doesn't they call it Over. mindfulness? They do, but that's a bit, Perfect. might be a bit naff. Ours yeah, is a bit more like, what do we do with our hands yeah. while we're listening to an audio book? Because we don't want to like talk. Oh. I don't want to talk to everyone at first thing in the morning. It's too much. So well, it's true. Because like, you know what? And I, I can really listen. To, I love listening to audio books when I'm colouring in, but I can't listen to them in the car like some people can. And I can't walk around. The only time I can listen to an audio book is when I'm colouring in. I love audio books. So that's great. I mean, I've read Game of Thrones a few times, but I'm not listening to it. And I love it. Because the actor who does it is an actor that I knew. What's his name? Um, Roy, well, he passed away recently. He was like 90 hmm. something, but he's in these old, he's in a couple of old Hammer horror movies, which I adore. And um, yeah, he's one of these actors from the yesteryear. Roy DeCreasy or something? No, that's not right. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're in Brisbane. You're not in lockdown. I'm you're not in down. We're allowed out. It just is Whoa. And you're back in. It's not done for me. It's like a normal day, you know. It's a normal day, but in Belfast, you look out your window and you say, oh, yep, don't want to go out and look at that. Don't, I'm not going out there. No way. Whereas here, it's like, it's a beautiful sunny day. We're in an acre in Elf and it's a beautiful sunny day. The grass, oh. the sun's shining, you know, the, the swing pool looks inviting. I don't know if it's there. But, you know, yeah, Belfast to this, yeah, it's fine. It's not a big deal. When did you move from Belfast? I uh, moved in the 90s, I think it was 91. So I was going to do architecture. I was going to leave Belfast anyway. I was going to do architecture and um, spent a few months doing that. My, my parents moved to Australia and, uh, you know, because no, if you get a chance to get out of Belfast, especially where we lived, you, you, you take that chance. Yeah. So it's kind of weird though, because, you know, you go from, you know, the news in Belfast, which I, I've got my youngest here, I won't even tell you, to I like, know. the first news was like, there's a cat stuck up a tree. 
and uh, the firemen are rescuing it to go, that's the kind of news I want. I don't want the Belfast news, I want this news. But yeah. the, the worst thing is, Anna, the world is kind of, you look back in Belfast, and that was, oh, that was such a quaint version of terrorism, a little car bomb, there's only a few people maimed, now it's like, whoa, it's like, Thousands, I like <laughs> know it's a bit. I had a friend when I was. It was about 1991. I'm trying to think. Yeah. It could have even been. We had a student come and live with us from Belfast for a year. Really? Oh, that's yeah. Amazing. It's not a big place, so that's amazing. Wow. Well, no, her name's Lynn. I wonder oh. if you know her. No, no I probably do. I, if but you tell me which part of Belfast she's from, I'll know her religion. I'll know her tribal. Well, I was trying to get my head around the whole. They tried to explain like, don't mention. No, you stuff don't. You don't. and I didn't know what they meant not to mention and so then and also I'm not very good at not mentioning stuff that I shouldn't mention so I no, sat no. over the dinner table can your son hear me and he's going to do some drawing I know can yeah, you hear me oh okay <laughs> anyway you might be able to explain this one later but I was trying to be really really um considerate by asking her very seriously I was you know however old I was and said um so, but are you a Catholic or a prostitute? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a better question, the other one. She would prefer that. that is, I, just, I was not expecting that. And I couldn't understand why everyone just uh, went, oh, Anna, Anna, what have you done? Really? I've never heard anyone say that's awesome. I mean, you know what? That's yeah. better than asking. Otherwise, you'd be less offended, be more. But you can't just. Direct, I can't believe you'd even directly ask someone for Belfast. That wow. I didn't I, know. I must have been. It can't have been ninety-one. I was uh, born in seventy-seven. I must have been a bit younger than that. So. Yeah, ninety-one's still going. Actually, it ended in ninety-eight with the Good Friday agreement. But really, it, for me, it ended in two thousand one, September eleven, and people suddenly saw. Oh, Terrorism's not such a romantic, great thing. You know, it's not. A, it's a terrible thing, and people saw. You know, in the scale of what September 11th was. So suddenly, no one was giving any of these paramilitaries any money anymore. So I think that's an end. Of it. Wow, we got into a very serious. Subject. Sorry about that. I'm going to blame oh, me for so that. How do you ask that? Well, funny. I know. Well, there's a book called "Say Nothing" out at the minute, and it just talks about. It's about. It's a brilliant book. I loved it, but he, he mentions that. Not many people from Northern Ireland read it because it's just too close. Because it's a small place, most people know someone. And um, you know, in Southern Ireland, they're loving it. It's beautifully written. Patrick Keith is the this amazing journalist from Boston. It's extraordinary. Say nothing. I've got a friend who just moved to Derry. You got a friend moved to Derry? <laughs> who yeah. is that? I mean, this is a Twitter friend who's one of my like I've known for a really long time, and he Derry. he moved to Derry. Derry's beautiful. I love Derry. It's great. He it's seems great. to love it. So. I, love it. I mean, I, last time I was there, I was there with my brother, and people were actually talking in Irish. It was great to hear that, you know, and there's got museums, and of course, Derry Girls, which is brilliant. And so well written. Who's not in love with Derry Girls? Who's in Derry Girls? Anna? Oh, yeah. <sighs> I mean, it's not. Look at what I've done to your book. Oh, wow. That's awesome. You I thought that. to myself, I'll just pop a little note just to make sure that I don't forget which page to turn to. But it quickly uh, became every single page got a note. And then I'm uh, like, it is phenomenal. I've been I'm I'm in love with it, which is... I still know. look at it. And, you know, sometimes I do a book, especially a picture book, and I just I cringe. But that one, I like, yeah, I had so much fun doing it. And You're just, really hard on yourself. <laughs> no, I can't believe it came out even, you know. Like, Scholastic are pretty good doing the production. I remember telling a mate just before it came out, I said, oh, there's only two things I don't like about it. One is the price, because it got a bit expensive, and I couldn't fix that. Another one is the cover, and uh, he said to me, yeah, they're two pretty big things, but I managed to fix the cover. I just, the oh. cover was too busy, but no, I'm really pleased with the cover now. I never okay. spent my stuff, but I'm actually happy with it. That's very good. And it's in the it's in oh. Scholastic at the moment. Oh, it's in club. It's in the book club, so the kids can get it. It's twenty dollars in there, so that's I like. Club. I looked in there one. Um, you know, they both get. Book club. And I, I this is going to mess up the white balance, by the way. I'm probably going to disappear in the white balance, but I have to show people. Do you like leaving Easter eggs? Because it took me a while to figure out what was going on with this mountain. Oh yeah. And well, I just kept staring at it and staring at it, and it actually took me a while. Well, the and then I went, oh. it's very postmodern Easter eggs on Easter eggs. It's at first, a different story. So if you want, you can look closely and find out what the other story was. Because I was writing it, 
And um, I sort of mentioned it briefly at the back of the book, but yeah, I was writing something for way too long and I just got lost down the rabbit hole. And it was about 10 books in one. And gradually I'm sort of releasing books that are sort of this opus that I was trying to do. It was just so weird. If I explain it to you, it turns out you're inside someone's imagination and it was someone who draws way too much. Maybe it was like a bit too much about me, but I just get a lot. I mean, I I people, maybe you have the same amount. I've got theory. Ideas are cheap. We've all got ideas. Ideas are everywhere, but it's actually getting your idea to work so people can understand it. So I had too many ideas and I just got lost in it. It was like a blur of ideas, you know, mm. and, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll I think there is a lot of things probably in there, but that book was sort of the remnants of the painting. So I just got so lost and it was about, it's not even two years ago, I just got so lost. I just sent 25 paintings to Jenny because Emily Rogers' real name is Jenny. So I'll call her Emily. And um, that's, that's weird to think of her as Jenny. Weird to think of her. That's a little bit of a head spin. Yep. Oh, you didn't know that? No, I knew, but I forget. I intentionally forget. It's more like two people, because sometimes you do a talk, because she took over from, you know, Ida Buttros at the Women's Weekly, and she was a publisher at HarperCollins. I mean, she's pretty from, formidable. No, not formidable, not formidable. What's the word I'm looking for? Like, brilliant? That's right. Just word brilliant. What do you mean formidable? That sounds like she's scared. No, formidable is like powerful. Oh, good. That's what I meant. I think. She's done a lot of amazing things, and not to mention, like, brought up four kids by herself, single mum. I don't know how she did it. I really don't. She, she's pretty incredible. I've got, I'm like, a bit in awe of her. But she's a friend as well, but she's great, so. <laughs> you can see that there was another, because I did think to myself, and look, at this is, this might be, might help people see. Oh, uh, yeah, yes, there was a lot of that. Sorry, I've got, story. I've got. Ugly posties on it. Sort of are entering a boy's imagination. The original was, one was called The Boy Who Draws Dragons. So you can see there's little remnants of the original story in it. Do you know the Oriella book? Yeah, yeah, it's a science fiction book award. So, like, I love it. One of the best nights of my life was going to. Uh, I won it in, uh, I think it was about 10 years ago. And I had the best time. Oh, this is really weird. True story, I'm getting back to Belfast for some reason again. But I sat down right, and I just hear this Northern Irish accent beside me. Right beside me is a guy from Belfast. We get talking, his name is Patrick Jones. And he's this brilliant illustrator, draws dragons, does some, quite similar to my stuff. He loves Boris Felicio, if you know that illustrator, very famous illustrator. And we just got on like a house on fire, similar background. And we stayed up all night, just pub crawling in Brisbane. I was in Brisbane as well. So um, that was uh, in the valley. It was amazing. Oh. Never saw it since. Tried to get in contact. It's like he didn't exist. But he didn't Did you end up with Dooley's? Everyone ends up at Dooley's in the valley. No, we end up at the Troubadour. I don't think it's there anymore. It's the Troubadour. I don't Do know you? if Dooley's is there either. Really? It was, it was there a long time ago. Well, it reminds me of um, Melbourne a bit. And you've got a good music live scene in Brisbane. Brilliant. Love it. It's a wild time in Brisbane. Everyone should be here. In fact, you should oh, be here because it's really safe. <laughs> No. At the moment, oh, like, it's, it's like the one time where everyone's gone. Oh, Brisbane might not be the worst. Oh, but there you go. Awesome. You've got nice weather. Oh, this, is ir this is irrelevant, but we did the CYA conference and you did a yes. thing on how to draw dragons. Now, I don't draw dragons because they're really, really, really freaking hard. However, and I'll show you my first one and then my second one. <laughs> you have to not. Did he hear that? Yeah, he goes I'll go from far away. That is awesome. Anna, I love it. Anna, but oh, it's got real style to it. Can't draw and then they just show you some amazing picture. Like, it's like, whoa, that's incredible. That's you brilliant. did that. Like, you were just doing it all. You talked the oh, whole, everyone was a bit in awe because you managed to keep up this narrative of, of what you were saying alongside drawing this massive, beautiful, and oh, really you. quite perfect dragon. And everyone was just kind of jaw dropped going. We did quite a few of them. So I've had a bit of, ex and I didn't think Zoom was going to work, but I'm doing it for a couple of months. Like I get a few schools and I work for a charity. So they, a children's charity network, they send a few gigs my way talking to, I used to do, there's a lot of indigenous schools from far north of Australia. So I'm still chatting to them to give them a few art lessons through Zoom. So it's kind of bizarre, but that one, see why I want, I love that conference, but I was so nervous because it was going to be adults. So the night before, 
and I don't want, like, this is going to sound bad, and it doesn't happen very often, but one of my neighbours um, brought some beers over, and just over the fence, we were just chatting. So I woke up, I was really hungover, and, but the good thing about that was I had no time to worry, because I was so hungover, just like, okay, just do it. And I actually went, I was, it seemed to flow quite well, and I think I was because the audience were so lovely, and they were sending you nice messages, so. We and, were yeah. just... Tina it so well. Oh, well, thank it's you. So doing good. stuff, I find it easier when I'm drawing stuff. You kept it moving the way you keep it. Look, I've got ADHD. Your style suited me down to a T. I didn't lose focus once. I managed to... You're because ADHD, you do... Experiment? Yeah, yeah. I get told I've got that, but obviously in my day, you never got diagnosed. But no. well, never... I only got diagnosed four years ago. Really? Yeah. Well, when I was at school, uh, I was in year one, year two. My teacher all thought I was deaf because I was in such a such a, 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 a fog of daydreaming. I just wouldn't answer them. So I went off and did all these hearing tests, and they came to the conclusion, this is Belfast in the 70s, had a few th other things to worry about, came to the conclusion that the best thing to do was just to give me a little, little whip around the head, <laughs> a crack around the head if I'm daydreaming. So I'd be in this lovely daydream, and suddenly my year one, year two teacher just gives me a whack across the back of the head. I'm not making this up. And then and suddenly, yeah, I'm alert. Yeah, what do you want? Gee. I, I used to get things thrown at me. Even teachers I loved would. Really? I had one who taught me for two years, and he could throw a piece of chalk with amazing accuracy, and it would hit exactly with whatever I was doing. So if I was doing this, there's a piece of chalk would come landing, bang, in the middle of it. I'm like, what? You hit in the eye because I wasn't, you know, paying attention. I find it. I find that maybe I don't know if that's why, but I find also doing the two things at once way easier. So doing like the way you were doing the drawing and you were talking, I could focus better than if you were just talking. See, maybe I should do a drawing now while I'm chatting. But I, did, I, I just did, I did a Zoom, when did they want? I did one yesterday, actually. So, yeah, that's what the, the old, that's, I did the same one, I did the same way I one, but oh, it's yeah. fun doing them, actually. So, um, you know. So can you reuse the stencils? Because they look like they would take so long to make. I, I cut it out, I cut out the, the contact. Do it on computer now, actually. I've got my computer set up somewhere. That's a bit fancy. It's a bit fancy. You've got a Wacom, a, a thing called a Cintiq. So I draw directly onto the Cintiq. And, I mean, computers are amazing. What we can you, do. do you know what, though? I think you made a lot of it sound so much easier than it is. So you'd be like, oh, and you just pop this on, and then you've just done that. But then when you look, when I was thinking back, I'm like, Hang on a minute. So he's layered that all up, cut this out, got these parts together and got those parts together. And what looked like, you know, it's a bit like when they do a cooking show and they go and you just add all these ingredients together and blah, blah, blah. but they've gone and done all these things. Sure. But like cooking is a bit of a technique and that's a technique that I've shown people. So you could, I mean, if you just sort of follow it, anyone can do it really. That's what I'm saying. And, and kind I of. Think, well, what? I, I, I really do believe that. Like, I remember at school, like, I didn't really think I was very good at anything. And then I remember a teacher looking at a drawing and said, oh, that's a good drawing. I don't think she liked it. She just felt sorry for me because it was a bit lost probably. But it, like, when, when you're confident as a kid, you want to do it more. Of course, I mean, it makes sense. And I think when you're at school, if you lose that confidence, like if, if, look, a lot of people think they can't draw and so they don't draw. So one of my kids wanted yeah. to play football. He was going to play a and be a famous footballer. And he met one person better than I think I was telling you that it's in the CYA one, maybe. But, um, yeah, he just met one person. Went, That's it. Football career's over. He's better than me. That's it. Over. Yeah, you know, my son does that a little bit too. I don't like it's it. a bit like, oh, if I don't learn it instantly, I'm never going to learn it. And there's you know, that. Yeah, exactly. Trying to something get like this is something like, you know, when you do a workshop with the kids, you can, you can show them that it's actually pretty. So it is easy. Sorry, that well, was it's all. That, it's that you can you can do your best. Oh, no, what do we we do drawings and we call them like ish drawings? Like that, would, like what I do might be dragon ish, even if it looks a little bit like a lizard and a dinosaur. It's dragon ish, and I'm really happy with that. But that, and I I draw a lot because I love to do something not very well sometimes. Like I think I'm a real perfectionist in some areas. Do you ever storyboard your books? No, no one would do no, that. I'm. Although, it's not no. about you, though, I don't you plan them though. Bubbles. You don't plan them? Oh, you're a no. gardener. I'm, I'm like a... <laughs> let it grow like George R. R. Martin. You let it grow, but then unfortunately yeah. you kind of maybe never get reach your destination. If he plotted it out, it'd be a really boring, not boring, but it wouldn't maybe yeah. be as good. 
Have you ever yeah. have you read the Thrones? No, because I'm a bit of a chicken. Yeah. I agree. As in some of your drawings scared me. And it did make me think, because do you, have you ever done tattoo? Do you do tattooing? Um, I've done my own. I've got quite a few of my own ones, but I've, I've drawn my own. But yeah, because I can't like have tattoo. I've got, a, I've got like um, sleeves. So I've got yeah. a lot of tattoos. I mean, I love tattoos. And uh, yeah, I feel sorry. I've got for a drag. I've got on my back. I've got you got a drag on your back. You did, well, not really. See, it was free. The guy did it freehand, and it's like a feathered bird of paradisey dragon. I don't know what it is. He doesn't know what it was either. Wow. But it's very yeah, bright. The nearest I've got like a phoenix. It sounds kind of similar. I got yeah. mine done in bamboo in Thailand once, and he's just like. <sighs> okay, just... Yeah, no, I got mine done in my like, Brisbane. But it was by Loz, who was hilarious, old old school. In that story, and and like, anyway, sorry. <laughs> the funniest bit was when he was doing something, and he kind of he like moved a, something that was on the desk, and he and he went, and this is after seven hours, and he's like, "Oh, sorry, I scratched oh. you," and I just remember laughing so hard because he's like, he just apologised for scratching me with like his book. Yeah. Or <laughs> and I'm like, cutting it in seven hours. I was gonna say seven hours is sore. I think of it as like yeah, I don't, I didn't airline mind. flights. Like a one-hour flight's fine, but a twelve-hour flight, yeah, it's horrible. It's like goes up in in level, and like seven hours, like whoa, the last hour. We had a break, but it was just like once you're in there, that was all fine. But look at this golden dragon. Okay, oh. some of these. Look at this. Oh, I hit that. That's my only regret in that one. You showing that? No, you know what? Because what? what I was thinking, I remember looking at that and there's all I these, love that one. I think I ran out of time. I had about I had about nine months to do the whole book. A lot of it was sort of done beforehand. Do you uh, like ships? The, it's a, look at this. I'm sorry. Oh, now I have all, to... there was, oh, yeah, I like that one. I like that piece. But there was all these um, pictures in the caves and it was like the giants had drawn all these pictures telling stories and I just yeah. showed him drawing. I don't know why I did that. So, and I had all these drawings that can be used, so I don't know why I did. That's my one regret, that picture, so. Really? Yeah, I spent way too long looking at all of the illustrations. I'm oh, just going to hold them all up, yeah, but you don't oh, want me oh, to do that. That's great. I was thinking, did you ever illustrate for games like Dungeons & Dragons? I didn't. I never I remember that. Dungeons and Dragons. I was probably a bit older, and I remember people. No, actually, no, I've got friends my age who are into it, and they're tell, this is Australian friends, and they're saying it was really good for creativity and imagination. And I really wish they had, but no, I had a really misspent youth in Belfast where I didn't really. I did drawing, but it wasn't fancy drawing. It was more like, you know, painting on walls and stuff you shouldn't do and stuff, I'm, you know, I wish I hadn't done. I wish I'd, I'd love to have grown up in Australia swimming in rock pools and playing Dungeons and Dragons because it's great for imagination. Oh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't play it. It's not good for imagination. But Dungeons and Dragons, mm. I don't know enough about it, but it sounds incredibly brilliant you know but it's just the it's your illustrations i was thinking were you into dungeons and dragons no 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 that was and i still don't really get it but my son likes it i don't really get but it but we do it with lego we Earth. just make stories up with lego exactly they're making stories up and like i suppose i'm probably too cynical and jaded to ever imagine i'm sitting at a table and i'm like um, a merlin wizard or something I'm, yeah oh. we don't really do it like in role for him, it's all about the statistics and who fought who. I think about it. And whether you can make it funny. If I knew I was doing it, I, I'd probably love it. It'd be my secret, guilty secret that I'd just do. Dress, I'd dress up as a gnome and just be that. I'm always like, I'm basically um, teller. I always play the big dude who fights and that's it. I just want to be strong. I don't want magic. Which is weird because I love reading magic, but I don't want to do like it. Tell her there, and it took me a while to realize you're saying this is great. We're talking about characters in the glim, right? Yeah, that's tell awesome. Saying it out loud sounds good. Tell her. Tell her. Oh, I like tell her. That's great. I do. Jenny's. And I really liked. Yeah. No, I liked. I, yeah. Look at me not holding up. Not holding up. I should put it back here nicely on display with all of my. Well, I can believe you've got three Del Toro best books. You're saying that's your sister's books. Well, that's well, no. I'd lent some. See, so I had to get ah. some back because I've got the whole, the box. That's the empty at the moment. That's the box. You got the original ones. Yeah, they're yeah. from wow. From and it, oh, it's twenty one. We're doing a twenty one year anniversary next year. It's better come out this I mean, year. Twentieth sounds better, doesn't it? 
<laughs> but it comes up with the whole, my kids lie out all of the, they, you know, and this is them over the age. So they've all read it one by one. I've got a 16 year old, a 12 year old and a seven year old. So we've, we've, they've all been through, you know, the thing wow. and my seven year old's the youngest to read. To well, read. And they, they read Del Toro Fest, did they? Well, they, well, my seven year old had them read to her. Wow, that's I good. I don't know, did she do all of them? I think she did because she was then laying out wow. all the gems she could find in the house. Well, that's, yeah, that's great to hear that. I find, like, I mean, they were really, what, during the oh, time, yeah. they were huge. Like, in Japan, like, everyone was reading them. It was, people come back from Japan and say, oh, I was in the train, everyone's reading it. But these days, like, you ask a kid, most of them don't know it. So to hear that kids, you know. And they read it in school. and they Because they read all the silver door and the... Red door and the row and a, oh, yeah, I did those ones. Rim and Delta. So they read or so this is the thing. I didn't realise I'd been living with and I do have um, Old Ridley yeah, or the I've crack. got the old Ridley, yeah. But oh, wow. again don't know who's ago. borrowed that one. Someone's got old Ridley. But I did see I didn't know I had so much of your work on my shelves. And yeah, I'm that's like great. Oh, I love hearing that. It's really bizarre. Even though I'm getting used to the idea that writers are real people. Right, this is sort of new. Like when you haven't grown up in a world where you know people who make things that you know get published, and then to the idea that illustrators are real. This is all just kind of that. I think in Melbourne, uh, something like what's this to say? I think it's a, I think it's eighty-two percent of all people living in Melbourne are actually illustrators, and um, because it's heaps of near, so it's pretty young illustrator. I had to look up the castle place you mentioned. Oh, I'm also bad where my studio is. You have a castle. This is like people may not understand. I did look it up and I thought to myself, hang I on a minute. The book King Arthur Montsabat, the word Montsabat. I think that's where it comes from. Yeah, it's amazing. I love it there. What is it? Like, is there seriously a castle in Melbourne? Oh, you haven't um, checked out? Yeah, uh, um, I, we do readings for it because it's all shut down now. Yeah, people pay to come in and they look around these castles. It was built like about a hundred and something years ago by these artists. And one of the original guys, I must have the time wrong because he died this year, so it wouldn't have been 100 years. I think it's like 80 years ago. Jorgensen, Jan Jorgensen. I was trying to do right. that. Yeah, I'm not sure if that worked. Um, so he's one of the guys who started up, and he, he passed away. Unfortunately, I mean, he's quite old. I think he was in his late 80s. And um, some of his family, I think, are still there. I mean, a few. There's a few artists left, not many. And uh, so I rent a studio there, beautiful big studio. And yeah, it's... it's and it's in a castle. Hard to explain, you could say. It is like a castle, there's gargoyles and everything, and they made it out of all these old bits of sort of um, building that they knocked down in, in Melbourne CBD, apparently. Just took them out. But that's just phenomenal. And that's in Eltham, so I'm in Eltham. So we're, well, I'm actually in research, just like a couple of kilometres from where most of that is. I know it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. It's the only one like it in um, in Australia. And there's peacocks running around and yeah, and there's lakes and stuff. It, parts of it, I know. It's so bizarre. I, I took my mum there because she was visiting over Christmas there. I won't be able to do that for a long time again. I took my nephews and they're just walking around and going, oh yeah, that's fine, yeah, that's good. And I expect them to be more amazed. So I'm really glad you're amazed by that. It looks this is like how I book. imagine it. You realise this is how I'm imagining. <laughs> it's exact. That's a photograph of Montsalvat, and it has dragons in it. That's exactly no. <laughs> no, I thought you were going to show the witch's village. It's the village. Looks like Montsalvat. <laughs> uh, no, I'm thinking. Now yeah, you're going to be disappointed. Now I really built that. I built that way up. Sorry, Anna. <laughs> I, no, that's it'll forever be that way for me. Yeah, no, it's more like a little rambling a medieval village that looks like it was built by some artists. No, it's it's in between. It's in between. I'm like, I just find the whole thing amazing. Um, look at all the pictures behind you; they're amazing. Oh, thanks. I was just with them. Sort of, we're doing the Zoom meetings so where I'm chatting to all the schools. So I'll just, you know, it won't be like. We'll be like chatting like we're but not... doing the zoom things now people who don't like people who live further away can have you come and do things that's amazing i said that really well i mean it's I? not as good as like an in in person and uh, like you know i do a lot of school talk i love doing school talk so i'm just so grateful that i'm 
doing these. And I say a lot for a charity that I work for. So it's sort of like a non-for-profit charity. And they have an art competition I'm the art judge for. So I get, and they're just trying to promote, especially in some very remote parts of Australia, promote like art and I suppose, and, and literacy, they have um, a lot of authors doing it as well. But I suppose what we do, like teachers can't be on, on top of everything. And because I spend every waking hour doing art, then I'm going to probably know a few little things that maybe they don't know. So I'm able to, you know, simplify it. And art is something that kids get because they're like, my son is very quiet because he's drawing. I'm letting him do his drawing at the minute. And my older son loves drawing too. So, you know, and, and, and kids get these quite sophisticated concepts because art's all about looking. And if you want to prove something, mm -hmm. go, if you want to prove the colors get lighter, get further away, take them to a mountain range, go, look, they're lighter. So it's something they can see for themselves. And they get these university kind of, um, you know, it's really university standard concepts that you learn. Like I learned it in architecture. And you can you say it in a practical way, they get it. So it's a yes. really rewarding teaching it. So and, but also you get to see someone who takes it all really who takes it seriously and can have that role model effect. Yeah. Like if we'd had someone visit I can't even imagine, you know, visit the school, we never had a writer come, we never had uh, no, we an illustrator come or an artist. I think you mean exactly sort of legitimize it. A mate of mine said to me that the only thing he was a bit cynical, he um maybe I should name him. Like Philip Gwynn, I'm just going to name him. He did uh, Australian Rules, that movie, and Deadly and a brilliant guy. But he oh. said, the best thing you can do, he does a lot of school talks. Actually, I, I'm i allowed to talk about him because I designed his logo for him. So I, I did that for free. So I can say, but he says, the best thing you can do is to show students that, you know, there is like another path you can take, which is, you know, a creative path. And it doesn't have to be, and he comes from a computer programming point of view. So trying to do this as nicely as possible so I'm not saying not that I've named him but it's an interesting concept he says but he's sort of quite cynical he says that's the only thing you teach some that there's this alternative kind of path for your career but I think it's more than that because um, <laughs> I think it's more you can you can teach people even if art and writing is not something they want to do all their life it's it's just some, another way of looking at the world and it's it's your imagination and it's problem solving. And like, that's what I say when you're writing a book, I wonder, does anyone draw storyboard it? Of course they do. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, people do. Nice and if you think visually, sometimes it's, it helps. I don't know. I yeah, don't know. I would storyboard a video. I should storyboard what I tried to say there, Anna, because I've got a feeling I made no sense. Yeah, I'll make everything make sense. That's my specialty. <laughs> lockdown, I'll just be in a lockdown. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I say brains, we've all just... Just gonna a little bit, uh, yeah. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. In, my, in my family, right? And um, if I say something that doesn't make sense, go. Oh, it's all right. He's an artist. Just excuse him. And then with my everyone amongst artists, what they do is they go. It's all right. He's Irish, so you just got to excuse him. <laughs> Oh, no, I've got another one. It's lockdown. Just, oh, it's not, he's in lockdown. It's not making much no, sense. No one ever gives me excuses. They just go, it's just yeah, Anna it's just, or it's just mum. No one ever, terrible. like, I rarely it's finish a Ireland. sentence. Some people say, it's all right, she's Australian. They would do uh, it. She's Australian. When I was travelling, best thing ever, and my sister's just moved to Scotland, so she's she was, Why? yeah, I know. Look, life's she's just gone. Problems, uh, she's just gone to Aberdeen, as in uh, two days ago. Wow. Well, my mum's from Edinburgh, so I'm in Scotland very well. Uh, I lived in Edinburgh and Dundee, but she's gone that little bit wow. further up to Aberdeen. So many Australians in Edinburgh. Every second shop, you meet an Australian. And my problem is when I meet an Australian in Edinburgh, I want to hug them because they go, oh, my God, you're Australian. I'm Australian too. And they go, oh, my God, he's not Australian. You're not Australian. What, what are you doing? And I, and, sorry, this is an that was I'm almost like, a good Australian accent. No. Or I'm watching, like, rugby and Australians winning and I'm getting really excited. I don't mean, what you get so excited about Australians for? Like, you know, what you, what, what you don't like Scottish people. And I go, no, it's just I'm Australian. And then it's I way better being Australian, Australian there than English. Yeah, you don't want to know. Like, no. Jesus. Oh, sorry. Give no, me. you can't. You know, I did, I did mention to my, my niece and nephew, I was like, if you get start try, you know, you accidentally start doing accents or anything, just make sure whatever you do, it doesn't sound English. Oh, yeah. Uh, Totally. Always identify as Australian. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. No, we love Australians everywhere. I pretend to be Australian when I'm back in Ireland. I go in the pub. 
hey, good night, Mike, just in from Darwin, right? And I, I'm not making this up. I do that, and everyone buys me a drink, every single person I love. And then I'm like, oh, all right, see you later, guys. And, uh, yeah, shouting and uh, I, seriously. Did you ever get the joke that no one here gets this? When I was over there, they used to all go, hey, Snowy, I can see the pub from here. Because there was this joke, there was a Foster's ad on television really? where they'd have a guy on a big veranda and he'd be there on, hey, hey, Snowy, I can see the pub from here. And they said that to me for, for years. And well, I would just go, I don't know. Because, you know, when you live in, 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 well, we get Northern Ireland, unfortunately, part of the United Kingdom, so we get British television. It's like, Foster's, Australian for lager. Paul Hogan, get to Australia, everyone's drinking VB. Go, where's the Foster's? Foster's? And you go and order Foster's, you go, Foster's, mate? What are you ordering that for, mate? You go, what? I thought everyone was drinking Foster's and, and calling prawn shrimp. And what are they? It's not chunk on the other side. I'll skip <laughs> on the barbie. I don't know, it was something weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, it, someone something really weird. thought I rode a kangaroo to school. Barbie for you. What's that? <laughs> someone really thought that we rode kangaroos to school, that it was actually possible. No, that's you Australians. You tell us all these stories, like in the airport, there's meant to be loads oh, of and then you read this. And the tires are white. Tires aren't white, they're black, same as any other tires. It's really disappointing. <laughs> Stop doing that, Australians. It's a little bit funny. People do believe some really bizarre things about us. So. Well, we thought it was true. I found it, I found yeah, it, I found it. Beautiful beaches up there. Oh, well, there you go. Talking of <laughs> the Scottish cows. That's what we're talking about, Scotland. Scottish cows. That just made my day. Also, there's a bit of Northern Ireland down the bottom, Giant's Causeway, which is a pretty amazing place. So if we had your weather, Northern Ireland. Where? What am I looking for, Northern Ireland? Hexagon shaped rocks, Giant's Causeway. Yeah. Is that a Northern Ireland thing? Oh, yeah. Well, it's the story of Finn McCool, and they have the rocks in Scotland and uh, Northern Ireland. And the idea is that this giant made this causeway by throwing rocks across it, and then he met the other giant who was much bigger. So he ran back, and then he disguised himself as a baby, and the other giant comes back and goes, you know, oh, if that's the baby, the father must be enormous, and then he runs back. So that's a very short version of that story. That's it's a so story. Good. I wanted to sort of do a version of it, sort of, you know, turn it on its head and change it around and then sprinkle something else on it until it's completely different. And um, I can't wait till you till you get all the stories written that you've got. <laughs> like when you untangle them all and make them into div one, you know. Uh, well, I've got a few of them coming story. out, weirdly, and they're sort of remnants not coming out. Um, uh, 2022 is the next one coming out. Yeah. But, um, it's How like, so have you illustrated as well as written or have you? I've only written one book that was World of Monsters. So I did one and it's not even a story. It's just like, I know it's just a bit, I don't have, I've got it upstairs. I should have brought it on. Um, I don't, it, it's not great or anything. It's a weird book. It, it was, yeah, it's just sort of a rambling boy meeting monsters, really. I tried to make it sort of scientific and... You know what it's a bit like? It's a bit like those ology books, but a story in it where they meet monsters and it's sort of like you go into what it's made out of and there's little pull out oh. sections and stuff. I, I think it's out of print, can't get it anymore, but it was it was kind of fun. But I wrote we that love one. the ology books. Yeah, I me. actually went and checked all of mine to see which if you'd done them because I was thinking, oh, oh really? but they didn't quite match. I knew in my head they didn't quite match, but we have loads of them. Yeah, many men, you know, well, this one was originally called Monsterology, but then um, when the ology books came out, I couldn't call it that, so it's called World of Monsters. <sighs> but it was a monster because he's a monsterologist, you see. So it's funny how things mm. like that happen. Sometimes you think you've got a great idea, and then it comes out, and you go, Oh no, it's like the I think it's called morphic resonance, right? Where there's like a have you ever heard of morphic resonance? There's, no, there's, tell me. The monkey started eating something they'd never eaten before in this island that they happened to be studying, and then in another study at the exact same time, the same species of of monkey that weren't related at all started eating this fruit at the same time as well. And it's this idea that there's some connection of everyone's brain. Sorry, that was very. Mm -hmm. It's a bit Jungian yeah, also, kind of. We're also living in a matrix. According to, uh, what's his name, the tester guy? Elon Musk? Is that his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, well, he says we're living in the matrix, and his reasoning for this is in the future, we're definitely going to build the matrix. Definitely, 100%, we're going to build a matrix that we can all live in. Now, because we're going to build it in the future, the chances are the future's already built it, and this is the matrix. So, statistically, according to Elon Musk, we are definitely 100%. Or maybe not 100, 99.999% in the matrix. Yeah. Who are we actually? It, but, the matrix. but do we care? I know. I, that's like, what I care. Just, I'd rather, yeah. if the other, would you rather live in a beautiful matrix that isn't real or just live in your normal world that is real? I think I'd take the real one. I don't want to live in like a. I don't want the choice. You don't want the I choice? Don't, no, I don't want choosing. I just want it to be. Like, yeah. if this turned out to all be fake, that's okay. Just don't ever tell me. Yeah. And or think, if you tell me, see, then it would be ruined. Job. You couldn't enjoy it. I mean, you could have done a better job. I mean, Australia's pretty good. They've got a good job in Australia. But Northern Ireland in the 70s, gee, they really stuffed that up. And they yeah, it's like, what were they thinking? Can't well, you fix the programming? We fix Northern Ireland. There's a problem. There's a glitch there. So it's not working. Like, 18 degrees, a summer's day in Aberdeen. Fix that. Come on, there's a lot of fixing can be done. In this I'm happy with it, Elon Musk. Stick to your Tesla. It's going to send a complaint. Yeah. Just put in a, what do you call it? Like a maintenance order. This is the matrix. Who do we 2020 <laughs> is just so wrong. 2020, jeepers. What were you thinking? What the? Definitely a bug in the system. Definitely. But if this goes to YouTube, wherever you put it, this won't, this bit won't be aired because the matrix edit everything out that lets people know about the matrix and suddenly we'll disappear and, we, and people say i'm sure there was this brilliant author called anna and uh, she's doing all these great books and uh, i don't know what happened to her what about the guy who used to draw the dragons and that weird irish guy with the beard did he always have a beard he didn't have a beard something went wrong yeah did you use your own drafts oh, you know that the picture i held up with the bed you your own drafts yeah were they like your sketches Oh, they were on the floor. Many drawings. I've got like when the original. I spent like oh, this is really embarrassing, but it's like ten years working on this project. I've got hard drives full of pictures, like literally, um, like I mean, there's lots of different versions, but we're talking like hundreds of thousands of pictures every day, working mm -hmm. way into the night. I mean, I guess I love what I do. Like I said at the conference, obviously I love what I do because I'm going to do that. And I look back and think, oh, why did I do that? Because I mean, it didn't really lead. I mean, I suppose it was a bit of a failure in a way because the book didn't really happen. But it might happen. But it is leading to lots of different books. It led to The Glim. And there's other books coming out which are bits. It's not the story, but it's just bits of all these pictures that I did. I know. That's what I mean. It was insane. But I love doing it. So, yeah, all every little picture you see, yeah, it's, oh, it's all little pictures I've done, but I had a lot of time to do it. And, <clears throat> you know, for many years, I did all my talks, and I was still doing a lot of school talks, but sometimes it was just like years ago by when that was all I was working on. And, it's, yeah, it's pretty embarrassing that I spent that time. I got That's lost like a lot, but I enjoyed it. I loved doing it. I had fun. So I, I, can't, I can't regret it. I, I enjoyed doing it. And, um, wow. Yeah. And I learned a lot. Oh, I taught myself computers while I was doing it, so I didn't do any computer courses. So the computers came in just, I think a, a computer, my computer broke down and I was borrowing someone's computer and they had Photoshop on it. And at the time, I was actually gluing pictures together. I would glue them together and then get them scanned professionally. And then I thought, oh, well, I don't have to glue stuff together. Like if I wanted to combine two pictures, I literally cut them out. So I saw, oh, it is a Photoshop. So I Photoshop a lot of my own pictures together. And I've been doing it ever since. I've got all these pictures, and a lot of them I'm, I'm using for different stories. I'm working with different authors on. So my new thing is I'll send authors, like, a couple of pictures. And if they're inspired, say, oh, I'm really inspired. I've got to come up with something. Then we'll do a book together. So it's like this weird system. Oh, I don't know. It's amazing. But I'm like, like you were saying, you're a gardener. Some people plan these things. I think I'm definitely in the gardener category. You can yeah, me it's chaotic, but yeah, I'll, and I'll, I'll I sort like of mess with it until I like what I've done. But I mean, I love what I'm doing, and I think what it's probably the same view that the 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 most enjoyment is just seeing a picture happen, and it's such a rush, it's such a 
It's when if you can get something that matches what was in your head, even a little bit. Like if I can write something and it creates the emotion or the the mental picture of what I was looking for, I'm like, oh, and then I don't want to touch it again. I'm like, oh, don't break it. Don't break it. Because if I go in and really intentionally try and fix it, sorry, it just all crumbles. A category of enjoyment or something, isn't it? It's, I mean, it's hard. It can be hard work. And if it doesn't work, it's so frustrating. And I think like you're, we're talking about ADHD before. I'm sure I've got undiagnosed. I mean, I must do. You probably, people are diagnosing me if they're watching this. But, uh, but you know, I think it's that, that you, just not willing to give up. You just, is that a, a trait of ADHD? We just keep doing it all night until it comes right. Yeah. But it's I, that focus. All those great bass players, because playing the bass, it's like there's not many strings in a bass guitar, and they're just doing the same thing over and over again. A lot of theories are a lot of these great guitarists have a form of ADHD, because otherwise they wouldn't spend that time. Because you get, to get really good, it's just a matter of spending time on it. Yeah, just spend keep going. Time. And I suppose yeah. that's where maybe to go on different subjects, more controversial, a lot of the... Um, experimental drug use that these musicians were doing. I mean, it's, uh, Steve Jones of the Sex Pistols has his own radio show in LA now, and he was talking about it. He used to do all these crazy things, which you know no one should ever, ever experiment with, because I'm sure it's done a lot of damage, but like he would do them and he would spend all night just strumming these tunes. And he said- but it's like, yeah. Uh, he had undiagnosed ADHD as well, he reckons. So it's really I interesting. Reckon, yeah, self-medicating ADHD is pretty big. And that's what he did. And he, he, he actually says he doesn't regret it because he's, you know, one of the top, you know, guitar players in the world. He's only really been recognized now for it. So he's got an, an LA, um, you know, radio show, which everyone comes on. You know, he said everyone on it. See, when you get later in life, all those passions become a positive thing, whereas when you're a kid, they're all kind of shat on. True. But... This is not Minecraft ask question time. This is all about me, not about you, my love. It's all about daddy at the minute. It's all about them the rest of the time. I can have a little bit of, all about, yeah, it's not all about me at all. My, yeah. You know, I bet you someone's made your world. Someone happening. would make, you could make your world in Minecraft. We yeah. could. That's but, like, but Anna, sometimes they, what's the point of what I do when they can just immerse themselves in Minecraft and, computer games because they can't do that all the time it's boring if you do it all the time and also i think like for me what i do if i don't have a writer and if i can't do it myself then it's just a lot of pictures and like what i loved about the glim was like in a picture you can immerse yourself in a picture for a little while but with something like the glim i was able to like enter this world for like quite a while for like whatever like it took about eight months to the, nine months say eh? it's like just dating really so it was, uh, you know, nine months of, of just in this world. And it was yeah. awesome. So you can't read and, I, and you can tie all the pictures together. Like an author. And I suppose that's what a book has. Whereas a, a game, but a game you can do it. Well, like, I, I suppose what I'm saying was a really weird way of saying. If I just do a painting, I mean, that's not, that's not as meaningful. Because these days you can, you can get online and do Minecraft and maybe even create your own. I don't know, you know, in but the, your own world. Yeah, they but they would it. use, so they would look at your illustrations and then they want to be in them. You know, they want to be in that. And so they do that in their head, but yeah. then they can get on the game and make uh, stuff to do with it there and then they come out and do it. So it's just like having another expression of what they want to do, but it's not one or the other. I think I'm lucky doing books because the thing about books is we do need books and books is just oh, yeah. the most creative thing, really. So they live on. See, they live on. They're the ones that will be there. The technology will change. Yeah, and technology gives you no empathy. Like a book just makes you understand what people go through. It, it's just such a, uh, you know. It does, say, yeah, it depends what you, what you do with it. We don't do a lot. We always make sure it's a social thing. We do do that. Oh, wow. But the technology will, well, all of it, everything we do, like we try and, because we're isolated type people anyway, we try and make sure even the gaming is social, books are social because we listen to them together or we read them together. Like you have it on, I have it on the table for a few days and then we have so many discussions about it. Oh, that's about true. Wow. Things in it. And so it all becomes like. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So you've got the balance of the gaming and your. Yeah, but that took a lot of work and a lot of. 
Yeah. You know, that's one of the only things I'm really careful on because otherwise you just, you would do it all the time and then it's no fun anymore, to be honest. You've really but got to have the limits. And when they discover reading, it is pretty amazing. Like um, my boys just discovered audiobooks and yeah, it's not actually reading, but they're loving it. Like, is. Enough of it and entering yeah. that world. Well, we love that they're just allowing themselves to get lost in like a story. And as I said before, it's like that empathy element. And yeah. So I guess like for me, I mean, I wish I could write those stories. I can't, never will, as I find out. <laughs> but, I mean, but story, this, yeah, that's the ultimate. And if, yeah, drawing pictures for a story is, is yeah, I like that Im immersiveness that you can just enter that world. Yeah, uh, you know, I never. Read, uh, I think I was saying that CYA conference. I, I think it, I, I never read really in Belfast. No one really was giving me any books. I don't think we even had a library. And um, I guess people had other things to think about rather than making sure kids were reading the right books. But I think with in Australia, that's a great. Uh, the great thing of like publishing is going through all sort of tailwinds. But the great thing with publishing is there's teacher librarians and there's teachers at schools that are promoting it for our yeah. readership, the younger readers. There's a lot more now. Like I didn't read as much as a kid. I was oh, a terrible oh, reader. You're yeah, yeah, right. So that's like me. And the range now is incredible. I mean, there's everything. There's a lot of funny books and maybe, you know, I don't mind that because the kids love it. I mean, I remember bringing a book home and I thought, oh, this is so puerile. This is so silly. And I read it to the kids and they just burst out laughing at the end. There's a picture book. I thought, what do I know? It's not actually for me. It's for them and they love it. And that's what I want, you know? So the funny humor is great. And I love humor and, you know, brings something about humor, which is instantly gratifying or whatever but yeah so i can understand all the, the funny books yeah, and I like it gets them, them in and it's like mine to read like some funny ones and then they read a more serious one and then they'll read just like everything like that we watch like you want to so you just want different things to match your mood and we just try wow. you know one of my kids who started she just started off by reading receipts or cards <laughs> and i'm like okay you can read whatever you want to read if you want to wow. read the ingredients for that well, and that's, that's awesome. it. Just read, read that, wow. you know, and it, rather than like get in them on reading the right thing, if you just let them read whatever they want to read. Read more, yeah. And, and then receipts. Book of receipts. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. I prefer the micro kind of little creatures. Must have drawn something pretty funny there. See, the book of receipts get them laughing every time. There's something about the book of receipts that really has an effect on young people. Let's do the book of receipts. And book of receipts. A print run of ten, sixty dollars each. With GST added. GST added. <laughs> uh, a bit more on. But mine are obsessed with dragons. That's the other thing. Mine are absolutely, utterly, and completely obsessed with dragons because they're scared of dinosaurs. Well. I mean, they're, they're better. My younger one's the best yeah, at this. I found dinosaur images really frightening, oh. whereas dragons. And also dragons have, like, qualities. Oh. Do they like their dragons to talk or to roar? Like, do they like the talking ones? You know, like they don't really mind. They want them to have elements. And so, you know, the different colours? So all the dragons will have elements. So it's like a fire dragon and a... And this goes across many fantasy narratives that they'll have an element that they... Yeah represent and they love the facts about that and what they wings can of do. Fire. That's a, are they reading Wings of Fire? They have my oldest has my seven year old he actually stepped in and said no she shouldn't read it yet. I didn't get, I didn't get sucked into it but again it's not for my I opinion. haven't read them. But it's so popular and I love the idea of it because I love talking dragons. I love a dragon that talks because I think a dragon. I like them. I like them to be good and wise. Smart. Yeah. I do. I do like them to be wise. Because I was like Anne Maybe. McCaffrey, Catherine Kerr, dragon reader type. Not necessarily person. good as in I'm going to help you cross the road good, but have their own morality. Mm. But and yeah, they've sort of got to be kind of wise. You know, they kind of should look down on us a little bit. And I don't imagine dragons being really kind of, yeah, three chord thinking. Just, they're <clears> complex. <throat> Just made that up, three chord thinking. I don't know what I'm thinking, but. I think they, I think they should definitely not be, uh, I don't like them being like Puff the Magic Dragon. I'm not a fan of that. I vaguely remember that one. That's a song. 
Well, yeah, and they're sort of silly kind of ones. Right. I'm not big on yeah. the kind of... Well, it's drawn towards dragons, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's derogatory, and uh, I think people should stand up for dragons' rights. I think so. Dragons' much, rights. Much dragons. And but, these funny books, dragons, are belittling the seriousness of the dragon. That's true. Yes, I really, I absolutely and wholeheartedly agree. My seven-year-old is quite devastated, although she's being very tough about it, that I think she's realised they really aren't real. I'm sorry, I don't know who's listening. You know, but if you look at different she's cultures, not... all different cultures have dragons, different names for them, like Chinese but dragons. Oh, and the feathered dragons are really... Now, I don't know, because I read it in one of these ology books, and you might know the truth of this, given that you're more like a dragon speaker. If the Amphithea is the real name for the feathered dragons, Amphithea. I, I remember reading the ology books and wondering, did they make up all the names? Because, you know, the, there was the bipedal dragon, you know, it had two, two legs. Uh, the, but are they the, the real they, names? Do they make them up or are these like traditional, are these the actual names by the first dragon? I'm not good when I get confused over the, because it's like, you know, I can't the, mess with the real dragons. Like, did Bram Stoker make up the name Dracula or uh, like, I mean, I don't know. It's all these questions all through literature. I should um, know that. I don't know either. Did he make up Dracula, or was that was that was Dracula exist? There was Vlad the Impaler, but but did the, all the dragonology books make up all those names? I mean, they're great. And the great thing is, it doesn't really matter because it's it seems real, and I feel like it is real. And sometimes I'll go to a school and they'll say, "Oh, that's a dragon without wings," and they'll give the name from those ology books of what a dragon without wings is, and I think. Do they read the ology books or are they in the traditional dragon speaking kind of? Some of them res resonated, like the Chinese dragons would be called whatever and, the, you know, that kind of, some of them seem to resonate, but some of them are just really, hmm. I don't like being confused about whether that's, yeah. that's the real dragon name. I don't like being confused either. I don't know about that. What about Pokemon, all those different creatures? I mean, that's cool. Well, my kids know most of the history behind some of the, you know, those in terms of the real creatures. That the pika, there was a real, there's a real animal called the pika. Oh, oh, I was thinking the puka, which is an Irish kind of made-up animal. It's like oh. a, it's not that, is it? What's a pika? No, I think this one's a pika, which looks a bit like Pikachu. Oh, and that's a real animal. It's a real animal. Yeah. Wow. What, like real as it exists in the world? Yeah. Or, so I'm saying yes a little bit nervously, but I'm pretty sure yeah, I know yeah. that yes, there is a pika. I'm not sure if a puka exists. But they do like animals that are smushed together, or, or like if a dragon was like a fire dragon and an earth dragon, and then what dragon would that make? And then. Well, they're all sort of smushed together, aren't they? All mythical yeah. creatures, you know? I mean, it all comes from mistakes as well. Like, wasn't it, um, what was it, the. The centaur, like people just saw people riding a horse for the first time. It's a bit blurry. It's a little bit blurry. And they go, that looks like a half man, half horse. Whoa, that's great. The, Mongol the, so Mongolian, the Mongolian army came across with those quite small <laughs> horses. And they and were so swift. Oh, really? Thought that people that thought they were one. Oh, that's great. But... I understood they'd never seen, they didn't know it was possible to ride a horse and it just, it wasn't a concept they were ever knew, but maybe it was because there were small horses. Well, no, both, it'd be that both. Would be a funny scene, wouldn't it? Sort of these warriors and little horses and you sort of be like, oh, that's so good. And before you know it, you got Genghis Khan, his wild man, just sort of pillaging and stuff. That's oh. But YouTube's full of things like people chatting, isn't it? I mean. I don't know, I didn't find much with authors though. I guess we're just not used to doing video well, I never format. To the author ones. I listen to just bizarre ones, like someone talking about um, the price of, of, well, they're talking about the price of Bali, which I didn't understand. I thought, why would Australia care about an Indonesian island? But it turned out they're talking about barley. And um, it took me a long time to think, wow, this is amazing, Bali. They're talking about, you know, Bali has gone up and down and I don't know. It's really weird, but I listen to things like that. And, and I, I'm not really interested in it, but it's just sort of a little bit of company, really. <laughs> like, 
I don't know why I say that. I've got heaps of friends who talk to you and stuff. But we spend a lot of time alone. That is kind of, you got to do it. No, and like, that's what, the, that's the one thing that, I mean, lockdown, I'm, I'm not really suffering and it's all fine, but I do miss him a bit. And we were catching up for a while there and we catch up regularly. So Zoom's not the same. Having a beer with your mates and Zoom's like kind of, it's not the same. No, I haven't done much social just for no reason, Zoom. Just weird because you, yeah, it's just weird. So yeah. Drink, uh, no, I, I don't know what to do. No, and my family, if we wanted to actually see each other, we wouldn't know what to say. We just go on Minecraft and muck around in there instead. Uh, no, oh, it must be great for that, though. Oh, my kids That's how we catch up. Friends over the phone. Yeah. I love Minecraft. Yeah. So Minecraft is very good. Yeah. About me, you remember, Miley? No, no, about you. About Daddy, no. <coughs> about me. It's all about you. It's not all no, about, about me. It's not about me, are they? You know all about you, Dad. I know that. I know it's all <laughs> Edit this and... Uh, find and I will it. edit this and I will put it up. Apologize. And then, I apologize for all of it, by the way. I just... Uh, no, I, see, um, that's what I'm normally I like. But being... It's rambling and just interrupting and talking at weird times about weird things. But it'd be a lie if I said it's not always like this. So, uh, <laughs> so what I'll do... Didn't make much sense. It's the button so quiet. Talking about toilet paper. Don't edit that bit out so it ends in something a bit better than that. No, I'm not going to tell you. What to do. I mean, you do. What I'll edit that and put it at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, but as you say, <laughs> if you watch six seconds, the chances of anyone watching this to the end are kind of. I really appreciate you chatting to me too. That was really fun. I've never done a, like a chat thing like this before. And they're really fun. Do stories have a shape? Like, is it a shape to it? Yeah. yeah they go like this. Oh, wow. That's awesome. They do. Because oh. they're like, you start and then you hit rock bottom, which is also the top, and then they come around and then they wow. end on the thing. I just don't like writing the endings. So I've really got to be more patient with endings. Because you start at the end? Or all the bits I love reading are the bits I don't like writing. Mm, I've learned that bit. The bits that when I'm reading. As well. I mean, if you read a Stephen, I think Stephen King's a famous gardener type writer. Yeah. And like, they're very character driven. Like, he doesn't, I don't think he plots, doesn't he? he doesn't I don't plot. know. His, his are very formulaic. So he may go back and do that um, I love later. Stephen. I think it's the characters. I just love the character. I mean, in his early ones, it was usually someone based on him. It was like someone doing a solitary job. It could be usually a writer and they lived in the same name and it was just yeah it's just very character driven and i love the character more than anything i mean salem's lot it's that writer in it that you're following that i love more than yeah. the actual story i think yeah he won the mist which is based on a uh, brilliant illustrator michael whelan and um yeah the mist he, he which is quite interesting because it's still that solitary worker but it's based on an illustrator who worked on Michael Wheel, one of the best science fiction illustrators, and yeah, and, and and again, it's just the character. I couldn't really care about the monsters in the fog. This is the book, and the I think they made a TV series as well as a movie. But it's yes. uh, yeah, he's very character driven. Anyway, sorry. That was I like the, that. <laughs> I like a good voice. I like it when it's magical realists. So it's like normal world, and then there's something. And how much am I in love with this? Look at that. Uh, oh, cool. yeah, well, she's, she was I from, love that. I was Aunt Olga, her name was in my story, so I just... What was her name in the story? Aunt Olga. So I sent it to Jenny, and then she knew she, she had to have... So she sort of chose what characters to put into her story, because like, mm -hmm. I sent her all these pictures. How clever is that? They're writing a story, and a good story around the whole lot of paintings you get sent. I mean, that would be hard. I've tried it again with her, send her all the paintings, and she goes, look, I'll try, but it hasn't worked since. So mind you, it's only, it's not been that long since, it's only a year since it came out. Yeah, and the CBCA, you might be all. I can't believe it got on that, that was awesome. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. That yeah, is. That's really awesome. Just to get a short list of this great. This yeah, is a problem. You get a bit lost in these when you start looking at them and you forget yeah, what on earth it is. People, you know, enjoying the picture. Absolutely. Oh, Love it. And you can just, look at that. Sorry, look at this. I'm saying, look, like you've I'm never seen it before. That one because 
that one was like, you know, I thought it'd start with a monster and it's supposed to be in Finn's head, but it's not completely explained. So I oh, think I if, felt that. Well, I think if you're doing a book with words and pictures, there's got to be a third element and that's the reader who actually somehow fills the gap between the words and the pictures. So, oh, you got it, Anna, that that was actually... Yeah. Oh, good. But, there was, but I thought there was a possibility that that was another reality he was seeing. Yeah. Well, that's not just pictures he drew. Yeah. Like that that's definitely this window to, and he was seeing the combined worlds yeah. all together. That's what I was. Oh, that's great. Well, that's good. Imagining. But, you know, I've only, I've only read it once. Oh, and kids read, kids read things multiple times. So they've got a lot more time to get meaning out of it because they read things yeah. again and again. But yeah. yeah, for me, I was thinking he could see through the veil, so he was seeing what was going on. But even in Glim, it was like there's still this other thing that he's seeing tying everything together, and it mm -hmm. wasn't just Glim and then the other world. It wasn't just the two. There was sort of this thing going on. I don't know. I, that's in my head anyway, that he was okay. tying that all together. And even past and present, I didn't know if there was a time element in terms of seeing what had happened in the past and yeah. seeing what had happened or would happen in terms of when he sees things flying around, is he seeing? There's um, a lot more they could do with the glim, like I think, you know, there's a lot. There's a but lot the word time. even, the glim. Yeah, How great. is there not already a glim? Yeah, right, a, a book called The Glim, do you mean? Yeah. Wow. I the glim. That. Yeah. And what the glim is. I love the names. Well, I love that you love the names, basically what I'm saying. Yeah. I love it too. But, and the glim, and you can find any, the good, and as a hashtag, there's no other glim. Wow. Everything under the hashtag Glim on like Instagram is all this. Oh, and that's really good sure. because there's endless books called The First Dragon, The White. Oh, I, never thought I just can't understand why there's no other Glim. Oh, that's good. That's great. Ah, it was awesome. We should again oh, sometime. We will. Good. And if you can get me to draw a dragon, you can get anyone to draw oh, a dragon. Lovely. Thank you so much. So Often good chatting to you. And bye to your son. Thanks so much, Anna. It's your time today.